Love laid bare. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. You are through to another episode of Love Laid Bare, and I'm, of course, your host, Dion. Um, so how are you guys this week? Um, last week, I had a chat with Lorraine White, and we were talking about defining spirituality um, and just some of the experiences she'd been through. So this year, I wanted to have, um, um, a, 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 I guess, more of a, a different kind of conversation, not anything unusual. You know, we haven't um, really touched on um, parenting and, you know, the experiences that, you know, we kind of have for a while. So I would like to introduce you to my guest for today. His name is Kieran and he is also a podcaster. He um, podcasts for yeah, a different world podcast um, and you can find that on YouTube. How are you, Kieran? I'm good. I'm fine. I'm all right. Yeah, not too bad. Good, good. This is very professional. Is it? No, it's fine. Yeah, it's very professional. <laughs> so how long have you been podcasting for? So I think we started the first one was November. Okay. So, yeah, so yeah, we're fa- fairly, uh, fairly new to it, to be fair. Um, it was something we were supposed to do for, we were t- in conversation about for about two, two and a half years, but we never had the time to do it. And obviously mm-hmm. Corona happened yeah. and um, yeah, put all the time in the world. So. Okay, cool. So um, what's your, what's your experience has been with the podcasting so far? Like, how have you, have you found it's, it? I don't like, as, as mad as it's going to sound, I don't particularly like being in front of a camera. Yeah. So I, I, the first few were um, a little bit awkward, but I've gotten used to it now. Plus, it's three friends, so I think that helps kind of. And it's not too... Um, it's not as serious, but it's not too serious. So we get to kind of have a bit of fun where the topics allow. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's not, it's not too, it's, I'm getting used to it, I think. Well, I wouldn't be, otherwise I wouldn't be here. So I must be getting used to so, something. I mean, you're, you're like, you're like my second guest doing like a, a visual kind of recording. So for me as well, okay. I'm be like, I've been, I've been behind a microphone for three years now. So mm. it's now like kind of be on camera. It's a bit like. Yeah. But um, yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So today we're going to talk about your journey in terms of being a father, some mm-hmm. of the highs and the lows, because um, I think it's probably a story that a lot of people, men and women, can relate to. But um, I often, I, well, I feel like you don't really hear the journey much from a man's perspective, you know. Um, so just give us a bit of a bit of background about yourself. So, so, right, so in terms of parent wise, yeah, or kid wise. So I've got I've got three um, three children, two boys and a girl. My daughter is twenty one in July, and the boys are fifteen in June and eleven in October. Okay. So they are so that so three kids. By I've got um, they were born out of three different relationships Mm -hmm. uh the first one was i was 19 um yeah 19 met met a girl in college thought it was going to last forever it lasted about six months oh wow okay yeah and then resulted in yeah my first child and it wasn't um it wasn't the best of experiences to be fair like there was a lot of Right, it was a bit of a whirlwind, so there were a lot of not extreme emotions, like there wasn't any violence or anything, but it was a lot of you get sometimes you get caught up in things because hormones take over your 90. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it was very kind of like sudden. Literally, we met, she was in my class at college, we met, spent like every day together for however many months, mm-hmm. got pregnant moved her into my mum's okay tried to do the whole um family thing properly it didn't really pan out and then spent however many years afterwards like in and out of contact centers doing a lot of stuff that a, a, a 20 odd year old probably shouldn't have been doing mm. in terms of like having to go to court 
having to um, stick to court orders and having to navigate through all of that still while kind of getting to know yourself. You know, I mean, 19, 20, 21, you just about know yourself. So you're having to kind of get to know, get to know a child, get to know yourself, having to navigate through all this stuff that, so you're sitting in magistrates courts with people that are going through like divorces and that kind of stuff. And you're sitting there, like the youngest person in the room, and you're trying to have to kind of grow up on the spot. It was difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. It was kind of off-putting as well, to be fair. I didn't want any more kids after, off the back of it. Things. Yeah. Okay, so if we take it back then, um, so when, so did you get a call? Did she tell you in college? Like, how did it kind of? How did we find that? we we found out? How did we find out? She wasn't feeling well. She wasn't. No, do you know? Actually, you know what it was? She was. She wasn't feeling well. She was sleeping a lot, and I think my mum said, my, "You know, the old West Indian women." My mum was like, mm, "You sure she's not pregnant?" It's like, well, I don't know. So we had, I think we did a test and then it came back as, yeah, it came back as, it came back as positive. And then we kind of sat in awe for a bit and then had to try and work out how to tell my mum because her, her relationship with her family was strained at the time. So she didn't really have much contact with them. So it was more kind of try, me trying to explain to my mum mm -hmm. that her 19 year old baby was about to have a baby so yeah it wasn't so okay so what was going through your mind at the time so I know you said that you know you both tried to sit down and think about how you were going to do things but what was going through your mind at the time I was a bit I'm not angry but I was all right so just to take it back a bit I in terms of like having sex and stuff I started relatively late in terms of my peer group, I started at 17. So my reasoning behind it was, I didn't want to have any kids young. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so I started at 17. So she really, she was my second girlfriend. So two years later, the mm -hmm. same thing that I spent however many years trying to avoid doing. So I'm now in the middle of it and I'm, I'm now going to be a dad. So I'm sitting there like, I don't have any money. I'm in, I'm in college, I'm trying to think about going, I'm going to college, I'm trying to think about going uni. So I've got other stuff, I haven't really lived much, so I'm, I'm sat there and a lot of it was disbelief for the longest. And then after the disbelief, you get, you're scared. Yeah. And then after that, you kind of, you have like, a, not a man up moment, but you kind of have to, you kind of deal with it, you have to deal with it after that. So we were having conversations between the two of us, like, what are we going to do? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that helped. But yeah, I don't know, it was, it was I don't know, it's a weird one to put into words at 19. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really taking much seriously. Well, clearly I wasn't, because otherwise I would have been making sure that these kind of things didn't happen. But yeah, I think at 19, you don't really, you're not paying attention to, much yeah. you're just kind of trying to live and enjoy yourself so this kind of comes along it's a bit of a curveball okay so you mentioned you know feeling kind of fearful but then kind of having that feeling that you needed to kind of um man up so in your mind at the time what did manning up look like i went and got a job i think I, I went and got a job i was so we were i was doing we were both doing, we met in class, we were both doing media studies. So, actually no, what happened was, we found out she was pregnant, then the college found out she was pregnant and they actually asked her to leave. They asked her to leave? They asked her to leave, it was a big conversation, they asked wow. her to leave, asked, not asked so much to leave, but kind of suggested that it's better if she left. Because, something about being, not, in not so in not so many words, something about being a distraction, but they dressed it up as their insurance wouldn't cover it. So if she was to fall down or something was to happen to her, okay. their insurance wouldn't cover it. So me being me, 
I had like a two pack moment and cussed out everybody and left. So we both left. Right. And um, yeah, then I went, so we sat down, what are we gonna do? Went and got a job. So in, in amongst all of this, I had, I was doing like small cleaning jobs and stuff with my mum growing up. So I, I kind of had not money, but there was an income there, but it wasn't enough. So I went and got a job in, where did I go first? So it was a cinema. So I scrapped all my plans of going to, going to uni, because obviously we need money. So I went and got a job in the cinema and just tried to do that. So I didn't have much frame of reference in terms of what I'm supposed to do. Because my, like my dad was around, but he wasn't from like 11 to, from 11 onwards, he was like in and out. So he'd be abroad, he'd come back, he'd be abroad, he'd come back. So I didn't have, and then my brothers don't have kids. So I was trying to base everything off my idea of what I thought I should do. Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah, go and get a job. So I went and did that and then moved her into my mum's. She was in a hostel at the time. So it was like, well, it doesn't make any sense you being there. We've got room at mine. My mum was like, yeah, cool. And um, yeah, she's quite accommodating, my mum. And then, yeah, so we moved her in and tried to do like the family thing, mm -hmm. really. And that didn't go well. So it went well for about five or six months, and then. Is this after baby? After the baby was born? No, no. This is oh no. This there's a whole there's a whole run up to that. So okay, we find out she. So basically, the we she got pregnant. Maybe or we we got we got pregnant maybe about a month into us. So when I say six months, that six months kind of goes from us meeting day one, right the way up to her being six months pregnant. So by the time she was six months pregnant, whatever we had had fallen apart. Mm -hmm. um, and she left my mum's and was living, she got a, a like a, a mother and baby unit situation right. in in South London. So she left mine. I was in South London. And then I didn't speak to her again until the day my daughter was born. So there was like a th three month window where I didn't see or speak to her. And then I got a phone call the day she was born. She was in the hospital. So we went to the hospital and then we started communication again then. And then I was kind of go backwards and forwards seeing them. And then we kind of recon reconciled and then it went pear shaped again. So there was a lot of um, on off moments. And I'm not actually sure why looking back on it, I think where I put her down as being controlling before, I think maybe she wasn't really dealing with it well. So she was showing out a bit. Okay. So I think, so when I was a, the younger me, put it down to her just being difficult, but I think maybe she wasn't, maybe she wasn't equipped for it because she was, you know what I mean? She, we were young. So yeah. maybe mm -hmm. she wasn't really equipped for it. Plus she, her relationship with her family was strained anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe, yeah, maybe that didn't help, but yeah, it just, it things just fell apart. They fell apart quickly after we reconciled and then um yeah just contact centers and a lot of court dates a lot of visits in contact centers um and a, there was an order in place up until my daughter was six and then that fell apart so i think the last time i physically saw the last time i physically see my daughter she was eight well, and so she's till now. sorry yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no, there's no actual contact between the two of us from, yeah, she was eight years old. So she's 21 in July. Wow. Yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah I'll, let, I'll let everybody do the maths on that. But yeah, so the last time I saw her physically, her mum brought her to my mum's when her and her, her and her mum went to Westfield, 2008. 
for the Christmas shopping, left her at my mum's for, for two, three hours, and that was the last time I saw her. So I haven't spoken to her since. Well, I haven't seen her since. We've had, I'd say communication, but we spoke via WhatsApp and whatnot. But even that's not, yeah, it's not, it's not made the relationship any better. So do you, so do you put that down to obviously the kind of the, the challenges that you had with with her mother from like the, the, the initial first six years? Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, has that, has that had a, a very kind of negative impact on on you trying to kind of rebuild that relationship with her? Because to, cause to be honest, that's, I think that situation is quite, um, like you say, you were very young. Mm-hmm. So um, I would probably even go as far to say that it was quite quite traumatizing for both of you. Yeah, 100%. Um, having to go through the court system, having to probably deal with solicitors, contact centers, probably maybe social services, I don't know, what have you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a lot to deal with, you know, being quite young, you know, you've, you're, you're kind of dealing with the, 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 the shock, the fear of, you know, becoming a parent. And then you're kind of thrown into this whirlwind of, of, a, of, of a situation. Mm-hmm. And you're still, at the same time, you're still trying to go out. You're still trying to, because your immediate friends group, your, your friend circle, none of them are having these problems. So there's still people that, working they're going uni they're getting jobs they're doing this they're living so you're kind of in this bubble where inwardly you still want to kind of do that stuff but Mm -hmm. outwardly you can't so when everybody else is going out you're pushing a buggy you're doing all this other stuff so you're 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 having to grow up quickly but you're not actually growing up quickly so there's like a struggle there yeah but um yeah, that hint that was it was I think yeah, trauma is a good word for it because it put me off. To be honest, it's a miracle that I've even had two other kids because it was very off putting. I I swore to myself that I wouldn't have any more children. I actually inquired getting the snip, but they told me I was too young. Really? Yeah, wow. yeah. How old were you when you went to do that? When I got this, about twenty four. That young? I think so. About twenty four, twenty five. I think, and they the woman, they were like, nah. Because you're, you're too young, you might change your mind. I was dead against it, dead against it. Didn't want any more kids. But then, but then, but then you did, I guess. Well, yeah. Do, did you, I'm, I'm being honest, do you feel mm-hmm. like you were robbed of your first 100%. opportunity of, of being a dad? Yeah, 100%. Because even now, if we, because obviously you hear stories about people's long lost children coming back into their lives like as adults, even if that was to happen, it's unlikely, but even if that was to happen, I've still lost those formative years. So what, for for me, what kind of relationship do we have now? Mm. Because you're not, because it's never gonna be, like my, my, my sons will always have that kind of, well, that's that. We he did this, we did this, but me and her will never because she she won't remember any of it. Mm. So that's never gonna you're never gonna be able to you can't go back and build those formative years. So if you're meeting as adults, even if they haven't been told that you're the the the, the devil, they're still gonna have a formed an opinion of you based on the fact that they are now adults. So what kind of relationship do you have with them then? Yeah. Like, where do you go from there? Mm. Have you ever, have you ever kind of like, um, well, I'm sure you probably have, but do you kind of like imagine what she's like now and, you know, what she kind of looks like and... Well, like, well it's, it's, a, it's a weird one because, all right, so her and my eldest son, they were in communication up until... maybe four years ago. So they were in regular, not regular communication, but they used to speak. So they met up a couple of times or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, I was all right with that because at least my, my whole thing was, if we can't have a relationship, you've got siblings or you had a, you've got a sibling. So mm-hmm. 
at the very least, if you guys can have some kind of relationship, then that's fine. It's all right with me. I'll, I'll step, step out of it. So through that, I'd get pictures or I'd get little things. So I've always, like, I know what she looks like. I know where they live. I know, like, not the ins and outs, but I know that she, she what she wants to do for a living, that she, she's going uni, she's studying um, medicine. Like, I know bits, mm -hmm. but there's never going to be enough. Like, I don't know what your favourite colour is or mm. your favourite food or what side of the bed you sleep on. So little things that you know from growing up with someone or watching someone grow up, I'm never going to have that. So, yeah, mm. definitely robbed, 100%. So do you, do you, I, I guess, because you've had the experience, you can probably more so empathise with a lot of men that are particularly in this situation because mm -hmm. you, because you, 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 you see it all the time. Yeah. Kind of thing. But um, I guess a lot of people might probably watch this and think, well, you know, couldn't you have maybe tried a bit harder if you really want that relationship? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Actually, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to speak for you. Right. So, so just to, 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 not to cut you, but to bounce off the, because the, people will say, oh, you, so the, the things that I normally hear or have heard over the years is, well, you must have done something. Hmm. There must have been a reason that you ended up being treated like this. And, and the thing is, there was no, like, there's no violence. I wasn't, I'm not, a, I'm not abusive. I'm not violent. There was no infidelity. There was nothing like so relationships since then i've i've had little indiscretions and i've done things cool but that one if that hadn't have turned out how it turned out we probably would end in my mind we would have got married so it was really? yeah so in my head if if that would have gone the way that i envisioned it going there wouldn't have been anybody else so you get told that then you also get told Oh, you know, you could have done more. You could have tried harder. But my thing is, so from, let's say, 20, right the way through to 26, I was doing things that, or no, you're not 26, 25. I was doing things that people in their 40s hadn't done. So it was draining to a point because I'm having to, like, I'm turning down opportunities to go to uni. I'm turning down, up, like, things that would have, change the course of my life now mm -hmm. I wasn't able to do then so it gets to a point where you just get tired plus I had my my second child was born 2006 so once he came I kind of said to myself I can I can keep putting all my energy into trying to make this here into a proper relationship or I can focus on him. Plus, that wasn't the best of situations at the time as well. So it was literally a choice between the two. I was just tired. So I, I, I probably, maybe I could have done more, but yeah, it just got, I hit a wall, to be honest. And this is the thing, like, I get that because I think when you're, when you've been fighting something for a long period of mm. time, you do sometimes get to the point where you literally feel exhausted and it's like sometimes to keep banging on that door ends up hurting you yeah 100 percent. plus the thing with the the thing with the legal system here and it's easy sometimes for people to bash men like you always hear well the guys aren't doing this the guys aren't doing that when there are orders and stuff in place and the mums don't adhere to the orders like there would be times that I'm supposed to pick her up every other weekend. Like I'd go up there. There's no one in the house. But you're supposed to be there because the court order says you're supposed to be there. So the times that she's not following it, the court doesn't really have the power to impose any kind of sanctions or anything on her. But oh, if it, but if you if you flipped, I'm not sure about now, but then they would they would send letters and, in, and tell her she has to stick to the order and stuff. But ultimately, if she didn't. There's nothing that they would do. Whereas if I get granted a, a specific set of rules for visitation and I miss them two or three times, they could cancel the whole order. Mm -hmm. So it was very kind of 
Do you know what I mean? It was very, so you, for me to be having to jump through hoop after hoop after hoop to then get visitation every other weekend, to then be sticking to it. So you have to get there at the time. You have to get there here. You have to bring her back at this time. When you're going and you're, you're getting there and there's no one in the house and you're standing there, like part of you just gets frustrated and you say, you know what, like if this, this is, yes, why am I, why am I doing this? Hmm. Like over and over again. Did you, did you have to kind of, um, I guess in a way, almost harden your emotions? Because, and the reason why I ask that is because if you're continuously trying to do what you're supposed to do, but you're coming, you're coming to this kind of brick hall essentially. Mm-hmm. Did you did you have to kind of literally harden yourself to almost not make yourself not care, but to almost like not feel that level yeah, 100%. Of burn? Yeah, hundred percent. Because you you things that, right, so things start. You, you don't see your child things start affecting you differently like things you don't like you might meet someone else and the way you deal with that person now is different or you don't want to get too close to anybody because of so it, you, you end yeah you end up getting a bit close definitely end up getting a bit closed off I was like that for years people used to always tell me oh you're a bit you're a bit cold or you're you're what was the, what was the emotionally unavailable I've been told a couple of times but then is it any wonder? Yeah, just by people, you're a bit, oh, you don't really talk about your feelings much, or you're a bit, yeah, because why? Why would I? After being to your formative years, you spent like just not turmoil, that's a bit excessive, but you just like it was like a hurricane, so you're all over the place. So now you're an adult, you have to carry some of that with you. You'd be it'd be impossible for you not to. So it's a lot, man. So do you, would you say that maybe like after, after that kind of period where you're trying and it's not working, would you say that you maybe acted out in other ways kind of thing, like outside of relationships, where there was anything that you kind of maybe did in your personal life to kind of like get your mind away from that? Like, did you party hard? Like, I partied you- hard. I partied hard. Um, I probably ended up doing some things that I shouldn't have done okay um yeah I think but it's a hard one because obviously you you don't want to take stuff back because you've lived but looking back on it I'd I'd say there's a lot of stuff that I did that I probably wouldn't have done if things turned out different like I'm a killer for not stumbling into relationships, but I stumbled into relationships. So I don't think I, I, I kind of went from her to someone else. And then that was a bit, that had a bit of turbulence. And then we had a baby and then it still was very turbulent. And then yeah, in between it was a lot, yeah, it was a lot of, lot of partying, a lot of just reckless, reckless behavior, but reckless behavior. So what kind of reckless behaviour? <laughs> so kind of, just a lot of like a lot of drinking, mm. like excessive money spending, okay. just mm. like just and not really thinking about consequences of, of things too much. It was a, like it was very kind of effort. My attitude for a long time was effort, even if I never said it to anybody. In my mind, it was like oh, like effort, just do whatever. Okay. Um, so when you kind of came on to having your second child, were you, would you say you were scared? Were you a bit like, were you apprehensive or were you ready, would you say? No, so all right, so I have to do background. I'm trying to keep it vague just in case anybody sees it and says, you're talking about me. But um, so we, so all right, so in amongst the, all the stuff with the first one, there was a, a girl that lived on my mum's road. So she lived just down the road from us. So we would always see each other and whatnot. So we've ended up talking. So now we've gotten together. So she was there for a lot of the court case, like the, the court stuff and all of that. So she was kind of aware of what was going on. So we 
got together. It was very, again, my stuff is very kind of, you meet, there's fireworks, it's all like intense and stuff and then it kind of fizzles out. Not fizzles out, but life stuff kind of gets in the way or it starts getting serious. So that we got together, it was all fun and games, whatever. Um, and then we would both do like not little things, but there was a lot of like we were both we both cheated. There was a lot of like it was very up and down. Mm -hmm. Um, in amongst all that, we fell pregnant. She we had a, a stillborn. Well, he wasn't stillborn, but he was born prematurely, was maybe alive for a few hours and then passed. So that kind of affected us both. And then through dealing with that, we broke up. But in the in the in between the breaking up, like we'd get back together, we'd go out, get drunk, get back together, get back together. Mm -hmm. So this is where the recklessness comes in. So carnival one year after not speaking for a while, bumped into each other, both drunk, whatever's happened, happened. And then as a result of it, a couple of weeks later, she tells me she's pregnant. Wasn't happy about it. We argued, a lot of things were said. Um, which in hindsight now, to be fair, I'm glad that it went the way it went because I wouldn't take him back for the world. But mm -hmm. at the time, in my mind, I didn't want any more kids. So now mm -hmm. someone's telling me they're pregnant. I was like, no, I don't want nothing to do with it. So I said a lot of stuff that I would never say again. Like, do you know what I mean? But it was, mm -hmm. a lot of it was anger and some of it was fear. And I just didn't really want to be in that position again. So, yeah, we got through it. It was, um, it's taken a while, but we're, we're, we're on better terms now. Mm. Yeah, but it was difficult. It was a hard one, man. I'm, I'm kind of still, I, I'm kind of Go still on. at the stillborn. Oh, okay. We can go back. I know, yeah, no, we I mean, we don't have to go back, but for me, I'm just kind of thinking like, so in a, in a way you were, you, you were kind of robbed of your first experience of having been a parent. Mm -hmm. Then you have the stillborn um, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, we, I've had, I've, I've had um, a gentleman um, from Don't Black Dads to, you know, who spoke about, um, you know, their experience with having a stillborn. Up to that point, mm -hmm. You've been through a lot. You've yes. Through a lot. A lot. There's a lot of stuff. So I even I say, yes, yeah, so I say stillborn. He was he was alive for a good few hours. Like he was he was born alive and then passed a couple of hours later. So it was like it was a it was a lot. Mm. I have to see that. Obviously, he's not he wasn't fully formed. So you're having to kind of look at something that's not someone that's not quite ready yet mm. and say bye so it was a lot so it was a lot and this is I think I must have been about 24 or 25 at the time no 20 about 23 maybe 24 so there was a 19 first child all that nonsense for how many years mm. second child comes few hours passes and then the fallout from that afterwards like it was a lot of it was a lot man I didn't really talk about it much either to be fair I haven't spoken about the the child death bit for a long time because you kind of just park it so how okay so be, before the fallout happened how did you cope in between that time between what part between well, him well, well, between him between him passing and then the the, the fallout with your a lot of a lot of arguments there was a lot of um no no how, did you, no, no how did you cope what did you what did you what did you do to keep yourself going i just kept i don't know i just kept going I just kept going. There's a lot, but then it, life carried on. So you, you, you're going out, you're still going out. You might, you're meeting people, you're having 
moments with people that you shouldn't really be having moments with. Like there was a lot of drink. There was a lot of, um, yeah, man, there was a lot of, yeah, just finding a coping mechanism. Because who are you going to bounce off? If, you're, if your immediate circle of friends haven't had these experiences, you can't bounce, you can't bounce off them and I can't load it on you mm-hmm. because A, it's not fair and B, you're not really, we're not, I'm just about equipped for it. So my good friends, where I'm, we weren't at that point where now we can sit and talk about anything. We've grown men. But yeah. being, being in your early 20s, you can't, it's, for a guy, you can't just sit and talk. It's, you, it wasn't a thing where you could sit and talk about anything. Mm-hmm. So you had to kind of internalise a lot of it and just, mm-hmm. like, bury it. But then you end up getting angry, you drink, or you, you might... There were, like, fights in clubs with people. There were all, ki- all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. in, that, in that time. But, yeah, you kind of... It's a weird one. I don't know. You get me, I don't know, you find a way to get through it. You have to. It's a lot in it. It's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy, it's, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's heavy. Not, it's heavy. It's not, not, not that I'm not used to heavy, but I just, mm. it's heavy. It's a lot. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't obviously, I, yeah. I don't know because I don't know you, but yeah, I, I did. It's a lot. It's a lot, man. Like, I, it, I've, I've, I think all of all of this stuff has made it where like at any given time I can carry a lot mm. like internally like I can be going through a lot of stuff and still outwardly look like everything's fine mm. because I've had years of practice doing it yeah do you know what I mean so it's not until I feel like offloading that anyone will know what's going on but that's taken a long time. And it's probably, it's, that's probably not healthy to be fair, but no. it's what I've known for the longest while. Mm. So as I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, we're having a conversation. I'm, I don't want to come across like I'm being blase about it, but. No, you're not, you're not, you're not coming across blase, blase at all. In actual mm. fact, um, you know, for, for, for a, a guy, this is, this is probably exactly what I would, yeah expect do you know what i mean but in um but but not in a kind of a judgmental you're being mm. way. but th- but this but people have to understand that people cope and deal with things in their own in their mm-hmm. own way so like like you said you know um you turned a lot to drink i mean when i've gone through stuff myself we should I, yeah, was, I, I was out i was I, I was i was drinking a lot and particularly you know with work and stuff like that you know my industry was very much about entertaining our brokers and what have you so most of the time most of my deals were done in the park or they were in bars or or what mm. have you. And that was that was my way of coping with what i was going through at home and in the workplace so like i i, I get it you know yeah um so so you're now on pregnancy number three. Three, yep. And you're, and granted, I can understand why you're like, I, I actually can't, you're, I can't do this, you mm. know, but it's probably showing itself in so many different kinds yeah, of ways. Yeah, so, um, so number three, not to say that I didn't, I thought, all right, so by the time I'm 30 now, I'm a little more seasoned with it all. So it's not, so there's not that there, there are no issues with this one. So the only, the major thing that was a, a gap or an issue, but we're, me, we're, me and the two boys, we're close, but me and the younger one, like we are close, close. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only thing that was, an issue, not an issue, but the only thing that made this, this chapter of parenting hard for me is that I was away for just short of two years. So he was, I went to prison t- 2014, I came out 2016. So there was, so he was four mm-hmm. when I left. So when I came back, he was six. 
he doesn't he didn't know where I was so we we kind of just said that I was abroad working it just made sense yeah it made sense so the older one knows because he was older so you can call him and talk to him or he'd write but um the younger one didn't know where I was and I didn't have them visit me Mm -hmm. so that was hard for, for in terms of how we kind of we were progressing because we were up until four we were did everything together so then there's a two year two year window where you don't see each other then you come back out he's now six and you're having to stop filling the gaps but you're trying to rebuild yes Mm -hmm. and put that all together but I feel like I'm a lot more for him I think he's gotten the best of me emotionally because I'm a bit more, not open, but I'm a bit more at peace, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I think hindsight, if I could have waited to have children, I would probably would have done it from 30 onwards. Yeah. Like 35, I think is a fantastic age because I'm now, what, 40. And I'm in a better headspace for it like I'm a lot you just know you you know yourself I think a lot of it is you can't not you can't because there are exceptions but you shouldn't be trying to get to know like a little person when you just about know yourself because there's a, there's a lot of baggage you've got to, you've got there's a lot of stuff you've got to go through growing up and if you're doing that yourself you can't impart not impart wisdom but I can't teach you anything bearing the the how to read tie your laces and whatnot I can't teach you anything else if I'm still learning like all of it myself yeah Mm -hmm. so I think this 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 time around like it's a lot more not that I'm taking it more seriously but I'm taking it more seriously Mm -hmm. Uh, with the with with the like my relationship with the two of them I try and make it it's like I'm not overcompensating but at the same time I'm kind of trying to do more because the first one went so bad yeah and I don't like my dad was very in and out like up until 11 he was there all the time taught me to ride a bike used to take me to school sit down and watch Star Trek all that kind of stuff but his mum got ill he went to Jamaica to to sort her out and then didn't come back for a bit and then would just pop in so even to this day like he'll pop in pop out but um I so I didn't so when I was going through all that stuff that you would want like a older male's opinion on Mm -hmm. couldn't turn to my dad because he wasn't here so my friend group my peer group and my me and my brothers aren't particularly close we are but we're not so so how, so how old do you say you've got older brothers? Yes, I'm the youngest. So my mum had me at 40. So my mum mum had me at 40. My siblings, I think my, I've got two brothers and two sisters on my mum's side. Okay. Um, my youngest sibling is my sister. One of my sisters, she's... I want to say... What am I? Mm, 12 years, maybe? 12 or 13 years older than me. Mm-hmm. And then everybody's up from that. Okay. So my the people I classed as like my brothers and stuff growing up with my friends right so my immediate because we were all the same age we had similar like situations they they were all the youngest child so we all kind of just clicked because we had so much in common so when I'm looking at like my role models growing up and it's weird to say because your role models supposed to be people older than you but my role models growing up were like my friend group like my immediate group of friends so even now everyone's had kids so you're looking at how they are with their kids and you're kind of getting inspiration from them and you're trying to put it together so you're still learning but you're learning from the people close to you Mm -hmm. instead of like your family members because I don't even so just to bring it back to, to my two now at 15 so the conversation I'm having with my 15 year old son 
I don't, sometimes I don't know how to talk to him because when I was 15, I was talking to my friends. Right. So there, there are conversations that I would have wished I would have sat down and had with my dad at 15 that I'm probably going to be having with my son now he's 15, 16. And sometimes I don't, we sort of will sit there, it's not an awkward silence, but it's a, like we're hanging out, but we're not, like I don't, like I don't know how to broach, how to approach the conversation with him mm-hmm. because I don't have a frame of reference to it. Right, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, so I'm still, there are still parts of it I'm trying to work out. But it's almost like it's a dress rehearsal because I'll get, I'll work it on him. Mm-hmm. And then by the time the younger one gets there, then I'll be a little bit more versed. Yeah. You, you get yeah. it? Does that make yeah, sense? No, yeah, yeah. 100% I do get it. Um, yeah. I mean, what I would say is, you know, don't be too hard on yourself because at the end of the day, I think as parents, you know, your first is, or your first, or, you know, your, your, your first proper experience is going to be difficult because you've not done it before. And you yeah, will yeah, yeah. hear people say that, or even parents say like they didn't really get it right until the youngest one because all the ones all the ones prior to that were kind of practice because you know yeah. we don't, don't get a handbook or a manual you you do what you think's best at the time yeah and you just got to kind of work with it as you go along you know so um I mean at the end of the day the fact that you're you know you're intentional with wanting to be a good dad and the, and the fact that you're even thinking about your interactions and stuff like that is a good is a good thing you know yeah well because you you because my my thing is especially with boys i know what i was like when i was off doing whatever i was doing and it was bad enough then so my thing with now is with everything that's going on outside I can't have you feel like you can't talk to me about yes. mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. because there's nothing that you can say to me that I'm not going to be able to talk to you about. Cause it's not like, so with my parents, there were times that they would say things and you'd be like, Oh, you don't, but you don't understand because mm-hmm. they genuinely didn't understand. They didn't know what was happening outside. They weren't privy to it. They weren't from it this time around. There are, there, are, there are directions that I've gone in my life that there's nothing you can tell me that I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna have experienced or be able to advise you on. Well, yeah. mm-hmm. So I need, so I need, I need them to be able to know that they can talk to me instead of talking to your, their peer group. Because a lot of the time your peer group, they're no good. Like I was lucky mm-hmm. with my lot. We got in, we did things, we got into, like trouble but it was never too like it was never too serious yeah so I'm I'm I was I was kind of I was the universe blessed with my friend group not everybody's like that and sometimes your friends will will be the ones to sink your ship 100% yeah I can't be having I didn't go through all of this all of that stuff I've gone through I didn't go through all of this now to like I've already and it's extreme I don't want to say it but I've already buried one child I'm not trying to like do you know what I mean yeah. scary man mm-hmm. scary mm-hmm. scary and that's the other side of it that's why I think sometimes part of me thinks if I is you get anxious you've got boys growing up in London you get anxious there's parts of me that I if I if I hadn't if I've got if I'd have gotten to 40 and not had any children I don't think I'd have any really yeah and I'm not I wouldn't take them back I love my kids but mm. The level of anxiety sometimes just with any little thing like you're going to school whatever it's like mm. Mm. I could probably live without that it's life stressful enough yeah London's not um like it's not we're, we're going through a bit of a a thing at the minute so if I'd yeah I think if I'd have gotten to 40 and not had any kids I don't think I'd have any I'd be the, the uncle the fun uncle the fun godparent oh. Yeah, the fun rich uncle. Yeah, and I'd be, <laughs> of course, you'd be minted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely minted. Kids are expensive. Trust me. So, if you could, if you could go back 
and talk to your 18 or 19 year old self go in through everything that you've gone through now what would you say what is the conversation that you would have if you don't mind sharing it with us don't be don't be so quick to jump into things like into and I don't know what it, like I don't know what it was I went because it's I went from avoiding women for fear of getting anyone pregnant to not jumping from woman to woman, but jumping from woman to woman, like from, and not really asking so you yourself. Jumping from woman to woman or jumping from woman to woman? Like, huh? <laughs> Jump, like going for like, so you meet like, meet, meet someone and then you're in a, like, in a relationship. Like I met my daughter's mum, in college, we hit it off, and I'm all of a sudden I'm in a relationship. Why am I in a relationship straight off the bat? Why were you in a relationship straight off the bat? I, I who knows? I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was I don't know if it was genetic attraction. I don't know what was going on, but it literally went from zero in it, and it was everybody noticed it. Mm -hmm. Like from the first date, from the first day we met. There were people that neither of us knew in that class and every single person in that class was like, I, I saw that. Like, there's something going on here. What's going on here? So it was, I don't know what, I don't know. I don't know. But I would definitely tell my 18-year-old self, do not be so quick to get into lust. Lust, we call it lust. Let's call it lust. Don't be so quick just to dive in and not, like and take just take time take time man I, I my I accelerate I was an adult way before I should have been like a proper adult way before I should have been so I feel like I've lost a lot of like growing up time and traded it for a lot of experiences that I probably could have done without mm -hmm. then so yeah I would I definitely take, take time take time what's been your Biggest regret, would you say? Do you believe in regrets? 100%. I've got loads. I've got loads. I, I, my biggest one, I'll take it right back. I used to want to, growing up, I wanted to make music videos. This was my thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I used to sit, my sister used to, one of my sisters was a, used to work on like documentaries and stuff for Channel 4. So she was big on the media thing. Mm -hmm. So growing up, she used to throw, like um, Spike Lee films on and all that. So growing up, I was watching Do The Right Thing at like nine and all sorts. We would sit and watch, watch, watch. Mm -hmm. So I went from that to then same time hip hop was big. So it was, you, everything you're seeing was all camera shots and angles and da, 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 da. So I used to sit and record, I've still got the tapes now, endless music videos, like yeah. long play, eight hour tapes long long mm. so I sit there take them apart in my mind I always used to try and think of a music video so this was my thing so any course I did in college was always media related so we met on one of those courses now my biggest regret off the back of that if I got I don't know if you know Ravensbourne Raven. it's like a like a, a broadcasting university it's in Kent it's like a really big it's like a big deal. Anyone that goes there normally ends up working on or doing something big in film and TV. Like it's a big, it's a big place. So we had a, I was part of a youth project that, that had like a, a tie into there. So they were accepting people on scholarships. So I got accepted for one. But instead of going, I did the go out and work bit. Now, if I hadn't have, uh, so yeah, so if I hadn't have done, if I had gone down that road, I'd be completely, I'd, my life would be completely different. But then at the same time, I wouldn't have the two, the two boys that I've got. Mm -hmm. So everything happens for a reason. Like I've got regrets, but then at the same time, you can look at, you can regret doing something, but it gave you the opportunity to, to have or do something else. Yes. So I don't, I don't look, I don't, I look back on, there's some things I look back on negatively I could have done without, but yeah, that's a regret. That is a regret. Not, it's not a major one, but that's a regret because it would have been, 
completely different. Like I'm seeing people that would have been in my same kind of class group and they've gone on, they're working on films and they're doing all this stuff and the third it's like, well, it's a bit bittersweet. Mm. But everything happens, everything happens for a reason, I suppose. Is it too late? <sighs> I don't know. Music videos, probably. Something in the music, like, I don't know, who knows? But I think the video part, that video part, it's a different, I don't, look at the drum we had setting up the computer to do this. <laughs> I don't have the, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the patience. There would be, there would be a tech team to do. Yeah, that. there would have to be, <laughs> there would have to be. I don't have the patience now to be sitting and editing all this kind of stuff. The programs are different now. I don't have the, I'm not tech savvy like that. I was, when I was, I couldn't do it. So we'll see. There's um, another thing I've realized is your life will take you in directions that you probably need to be going in, as mad as it sounds, because you'll go through a, a load of yep. horrible stuff, but you'll end up somewhere. You just got to like be open to it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm a lot more open to where I end up. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm still young, 40. Exactly. Life, so young. life starts at 40. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. My life calms down at 40, but yeah. Calms. <laughs> life, life calms, my, my life is calm now. Very calm. Good. I'll leave it like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what if, what advice would you give to, um, you know, any father who is kind of going through um, the same kind of situation, those situations that you've kind of had over the last, what, 20 years? Um, what would you say to someone that's watching this? Find someone to talk to or don't try and do it all on your own like try if you don't have and obviously it's hard for people because you might not have like a male role model directly that you can talk to but if you can try and find like it's, it's find someone because you can't be asking strangers but you there's got you've got to have someone around you that you can offload some stuff from without it being without you being judged and without it being, and without them off, find someone you can offload on without them offloading on you. Mm -hmm. So maybe somebody that isn't like bitter or, or twisted because of what they've gone through, because they're gonna end up giving you terrible advice. Yes. And you don't, you don't, you, you don't need it. You need someone that's gonna be a bit impartial and kind of, direct you in the right point you in the right way because it's a lot it's a lot to be doing on your own mm -hmm. and you don't and you have to like enjoy it man your first time around you gotta enjoy it that's that's like the first time you drove that kind of you know i mean that feeling of passing your test and then being in your own car mm -hmm. yeah. that feeling of independence you can still get that from being like a dad but it's you have to be you have to be open to enjoying it because it, it's, a, it's stressful but there are some like there's moments man you have to kind of be able to enjoy the moments because it's not as bad as it is like there's always beauty in something like, it, I love that. Yeah. yeah do you know what I mean it's always you can always you've got to look for it like it's yeah, like rain and rainbows or whatever. There's always something you can find to look at. So you've got to try and... Yeah, man, enjoy it. It's not all doom and gloom. Yeah. Not all doom and gloom. Okay. Well, Kieran, honestly, thank you for sharing your story with right. us today. Like I said, I wasn't... I wasn't, I, I, I had, I had no idea. And most of the time I don't, um, yeah. um, anyone that's new to the channel, when I, when I interview people, um, there is no pre-interview. I don't kind of, um, delve too much. I kind of like, just let whatever comes out, yeah. comes out. And, um, yeah, it's, um, 
yeah just sending you just sending you love like yeah man I'll, I'll take it i'm all right now yeah we're good well, i hope so i hope so yeah, we're good um, <laughs> so just remind us where can um where can the listeners um, so i am on i think insta is probably the best uh yeah west london's mayor ws wsc ldns mayor with an underscore um and also on if you've got the youtube talk back london channel and our pod is on there and the new episodes drop every sunday sunday at 6 p.m every sunday at 6 p.m yeah so those are probably the best two places and twitter but i don't remember my twitter app my my app my app I'll, I'll I'll drop it in the yeah drop it yeah in the, in the show notes afterwards yeah okay well guys please subscribe to his podcast um please share this with anyone that you think might appreciate the conversation if you have been affected by anything we've spoken about today please head over to the resources page on the website so that's www.lovelaybear.com forward slash resources um if you are interested in any type of counselling or therapy. Um, head over again to the website and um, we have a uh, the the black and asian network therapy network is there and you can pick a black or asian counselor in your area um so yes kieran again thank you for pleasure there. um guys as always take care i love you and it's a wrap see you later Love laid bare.